the handprint oh, of a child. child. Oh, I know it's late, but we probably should talk about this story before it's been two weeks and we don't remember. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dunstief Audio Fiction Magazine presents The Thirteen Nights of Halloween with Rish Outfield and Big Anklevich. Hi everybody, Big Anklevich. And uh, Rish Outfield. It is the promised post-story conversation from The Bend by Rish Outfield. Well, okay, let me speak first. You, the listener, and maybe you, Big Anklevich, have no idea how brave <laughs> I was to share this story. I'm surprised. Because I was afraid that it would be absolute crap. And I had no idea that it was as long as it is. <laughs> Unnecessarily long. But I, it was so tempting to just say, well, I'll sit down and I'll do one draft <laughs> and I'll fix it, you know, so that it's in shareable condition. I'm surprised how well you took my ribbing as we read the story, because I ribbed here and there, and those are all cut out, but uh, maybe there's some outtakes that followed that story. I don't know, because I haven't seen the final version yet, but I know that uh, at the very least, you've got, what, 20, 30 years in between this story and now, so... 30 years? Am I 60 or what? I don't know how... I guess it's only 20. Uh, uh, now that we're past the O's... And into the tens uh-huh. going on teens, I just automatically assume this decade is over and count it as 10. So, yeah, it's actually 22, something like that, years between you and the writing of this story. So, I suppose that's probably why you're able to shed them like water off your back. I would be deluded to think that this is excellent, that this is good writing, that whatever it was. I mean, the, the, the problems with the story are so obvious to me. That it almost feels like a different person wrote it, right? Well, and I'm distant from it, and I and I, it's almost like, well, I recognize the problems, so I'm clearly better now. Basically, a different person did write this. I mean, you have more time between now and when you wrote this story than you had in your entire life. When I wrote this, when you wrote the story, that's something. I think I would feel the same way. I mean, it's not you anymore this is something you wrote a long time ago so it's easier to just look at it and be like wow you know I, this could be better this is it's interesting i wish i could go back and take the knowledge that i've gained in the last 20 years with me and start from there i i, I don't know i mean i'm i'm still closer to it than you are obviously because i wrote it so? and i remember why i wrote it and i still see some good things in there yeah and there was one line that I really, really liked. And it wasn't the field after field after field after field. <laughs> Although I could see what I was trying to do there, too. I, I love the one line in there where you're just like, I don't remember it being this boring <laughs> when we drove out. It's just like, I don't know. It's just something funny. I, I was going to make a comment about, yeah, and the story. I, don't, I didn't I don't realize it was this boring when I wrote when it. I wrote it. <laughs> you know, if you recycle or whatever all your cells every seven years like the old wives tale is then yeah it's two people away from me at least yeah three people away from me (laughs) and so there is some distance but at the same time i was trying so hard i can see and you know me you know the things that i'm afraid of and you've probably (laughs) heard the stories of some of these things but we used to drive to las vegas a lot when i was a kid and I remember one time saying, what if there was a tunnel? Thinking of this to myself, I was in the back seat or in the, and we were in a station wagon and there was a little section that's almost a seat in the back. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, what if there was a tunnel? And as the family was driving through the tunnel, I could see a green faced ghost flying alongside the, the car, the station wagon with us at the same time. Mm-hmm. But when that's we reached creepy. the other end of the, the, the tunnel, it was gone. It, it could only haunt that stretch. And I was like, oh my gosh, how scary would that be kind of thing? And that's where I got most of my story ideas is how scary would that be or how cool would that be kind of thing. And I had forgotten, but that's in there, the green face or whatever. That's oh, got to be fly next to the car. part of where that came from. And then also 
my fear of looking in a rearview mirror and seeing somebody there that's there. And then also that experience we, I told you about in that very the first episode where we drove around this bend out in the countryside where all the farms are and it's just pitch black. There are no houses or anything like that. And there's like field that. after field after field after field after field after field after field. And that's right. Ankh Oatfield will be performing at the <laughs> Des Moines Field <laughs> Festival. Field Festival this, this upcoming Saturday and Sunday if one of the real bands cancels. And, and I told you about that, that we stopped the car to pee, I think, out in the the nowhere and the wind started to blow and the reeds or the long grass or whatever started to sway back and forth and it looked to me like something was moving toward us through the grass but something we couldn't see and that was really freaky to me and so it was like oh, i got to get back in the car we both ran in the car like teenage girls we <laughs> we got ourselves all excited in a frenzy what do you call that we something ourselves into a frenzy we whipped did we whip? into a frenzy? Well, that's yeah, generally yeah. how you describe a frenzy. I, don't, I mean, I think after Will Smith's daughter ruined that word for everybody, you can't use that word. But yeah, we mm. whipped ourselves into a frenzy. So it was like, oh, let's get the hell out of here. And we are as fast as we could driving and, you know, just tearing around this bend. And, and there, there was, a, was cow. a cow in the road. And yeah, I mean, we shrieked and slammed on the brakes or whatever because we were already in a heightened sense of... of, of our freak imagination out. or freak out or whatever and then something being in the road anyhow I mean, it's a story that we used to always tell because mm. it was it had a punchline you yeah. know what i mean it was a cow and it, the fact that it was a cow instead of a dead screaming woman like i always tell people uh, <laughs> in a white dress i can see what's the weird thing is i and i told you that in that episode the crashing stolen cars or whatever it's called i still see her in my mind in my memories i that there was a woman in a white dress standing in the road, even though there never was. My imagination burned that image white into my... Kind of a white spotted my... dress with some black spots on it. And, she had a bell around her neck. You know, to me, that's kind of the power of imagination. And, and you know, I, everybody has times when their imagination ran away with them. Or I, We said it earlier, you wait, you're in that haze between waking and sleeping, and you open your eyes and there's something there in the room. And you're like, ah... But then a second later, it's not there. It was never there. It was just your brain doing <laughs> stuff. Synapses doing stuff to you. My or wife whatever. does that every time I wake her up. She wakes up and goes, <gasps> oh, it's you. <laughs> every dang time. Just a minute ago when I took the baby into her. She wakes up. <gasps> That's horrible, dude. That's as horrible as the adverbs in my story. <laughs> and like the adverbs... That needs to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the prose is awkward and rambling and, and just too many words kind of thing. Too many commas. Try No, there can't be enough commas in the world. There are commas like right in the middle of phrases. It's like the windshield, comma, was cracked, <laughs> comma. It's like, wait, no, no, that's the, those go together. You can't put a comma in there. You... <laughs> Bring out your story. <laughs> and and yeah, just the, the all caps and the bold and the nine exclamation points and all the that. 15 ends to show that it's a drawn out fun. But I think I'd still do that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it, it was, it's me trying to, in type, in typesetting, convey scariness. And I don't know how you do that. I mean, now it's just italics. And, right. and hopefully the audience will understand. Anyhow, these these were the things that scared me. The idea of a, an undead boy or a ghost wanting you to play with him still scares me. That that idea is upsetting. It's much to me. more scary than a robot wanting you to play with it, I think. Okay, they're the same. They're this play with me yeah. in both stories. But I don't think I ever intended You've Got a Friend to be a horror story. I guess, I, did I? I don't know. It, it scared me at the end. It was meant to be an F you to you. <laughs> but not but a friendly Isn't person. everything that you write an F you to me? As a, you talk about how you keep writing the same story over and over again, isn't that? <laughs> yeah, that really bothered me the other day. I did a an episode 
a, a parallel universe version of me did an episode of his podcast and it bummed me out when I realized, hey, I've written this story before. This is essentially the same as this and this and this. And I had to do some soul searching afterward. I was like, gosh, does that mean I'm a talented hack? Am I Dean Kuntz? What, what's <laughs> wrong with me? And so I went for a, a long bike ride and I just thought about it. And ultimately I was still like, well, there are things that I respond to. There are things that scare me or things that intrigue me. And I write about them again and again and again. Could be worse. And I don't care if that makes me a hack. I'm still writing stories. And if there weren't things that captured my imagination, then I would have stopped long ago. So I would prefer that it's the same thought of it's they look like a person, but they're not a person. That idea has captivated me my whole life. And it didn't, then I would stop writing. I mean, I'm dealing with it. <laughs> Maybe it's a weakness to me, but... You know, I don't care. It could be worse. You could only come up with uh, paranormal romance ideas. <laughs> eh, well, we'll talk about that when it's time for your next story. I, You know, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the story. The, the scariest thing was just me being terrified that somebody somewhere is going to think that I'm on. It's like, why, why are you wasting our time with this crap? And you, <laughs> you, you, you used to think this was so scary. It's not scary. It just sucks or whatever. But again... It's been so many years. I don't care if somebody says that. I was like, okay, but I've learned something. And maybe you learned something from, well, they can't learn. They can just rage quit the daily podcast. We could. We could sit down with this story and teach a class on it and say, you know, how would we fix this line? How can you convey this in fewer words? Is this line necessary? Is it, you know what I mean? Uh huh. And, and so maybe somebody somewhere is like, shoot, they wasted an hour of my day but I hope not. I hope they were like, wow, you shared something from your youth, warts and all. <laughs> Greasy green fingernail fingers and all. But how, with three fingers in that same sentence? No, it's just two. You said wet fingers and black bitten fingernails, something like that. The idea of something drowned coming back to life is also horrible because the water does awful things to the body and to that there are a lot of things that still scare me that i'm trying to deal with in this story that i was trying to deal a teenage me was trying to deal with and it, it might be a fun experiment to rewrite the story now there's as not a drabble as a tra <laughs> oh wow <laughs> I, I don't know it's just it's like when you trust somebody enough to tell them the worst thing you ever did. And maybe they don't look at you the same way anymore. Maybe they can't respect you. Yeah, it'll take me a long time to look you in the eye again. <laughs> does that mean that you shouldn't have told them the worst thing you ever did? Or does it eventually, once you get past that tunnel with the creepy ghost, do you become closer? I don't know. You're both dead at the bottom of the swamp together at the end, so... I guess you could say that you've become closer. No, one last thing. The funny thing, though, when I wrote this, it was in the, the time period when I was really writing and saying, that's what I want to do. And I mean, there was a, a joy, a creation of something like that. Uh -huh. So I wrote a lot of stories when I was in this age. And I think this was probably one of my two or three favorite stories things that i was proudest of so can you imagine me sharing yeah, one, one of the stories like. that even as a 16 year old or whatever i was just like oh this story is awful <laughs> <laughs> was there very many of those see when i was a 16 year old i thought everything that flowed off my pencil was gold oh okay i was just like oh this is so rad this story is awesome and i wanted to share it with everyone because i thought i was so rad I remember re trying to read a story that I wrote to my girlfriend one night and getting to the end of it and realizing that she'd fallen asleep like halfway through the story, like 15 minutes before. And I was just like, well, I guess I'll just go home now. See you later. Uh, <laughs> in a way, I, I guess I did. Because, see, I was also thinking that I would be an artist and I was drawing a lot in this period. I, when, when you're a kid... There's so much free time that you can say, I'm going to try painting or I'm going to try sculpture. Or, I'm going to try, you know, any number of things yeah. to see what you're good at. And I was clearly not a great artist. You know, I could see yeah. this is what I'm wanting it to look like, but it doesn't quite look like that. I was the same writing, way. But with writing, because it's you're creating an image with words, 
I felt like I was much better at that. And, 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 you know, of course the proof is in the pudding, but there's, there's something magical about telling a story that you have to be a really good artist to tell a story through pictures. It's true. And through words, all of us use many, many words every single day. And we all tell stories every single day. Oh, you won't believe what happened to me at school today. You know? Mm -hmm. Oh, what I'd like to do to your girlfriend. You know, these are stories in a way. And that's so we have practice and practice and practice and practice. And, And I've told you that from a child, you know, eight years old or whatever, I would read stories into the, or tell stories, make them up as I went along into the tape recorder or whatever. And so maybe I had had a lot more practice at that even by this you were an early adopter in the whole podcast field <laughs> i guess so and that's something that we talk about all the time is today kids have youtube or they have blogs you know any uh-huh. number of ways of getting their stuff out there so that other people can see it and as a kid if i had grown up in the youtube era or whatever i would have had a channel and just sat in front of a microphone and made up stories and shared them with other people because before you reach a certain age, if you've been raised right, you think you can do anything. You yeah. think your stories are great. You think your art is great. You think your funny voice is hilarious or whatever. You know, it's before life stops you and smacks you and says, no, you're not that good. And there's somebody always going to be better than you in everything. And, and so, yeah, it would have been fun to share these stories. Now, I don't know what I would have done had I put the band out in the YouTube it's era blog. and had some troll get on there and say you know you sound like a four-year-old or whatever you know he uses more adverbs than jk rowling you idiot jag off maybe that would have hurt my feelings enough to stop i don't know you know like a pretty 14 year old girl or whatever saying this story really scared me it's like you know it made the hairs on the back of my neck stand up i I don't want to sleep alone tonight. And it's like, oh my gosh, this girl. You know what I mean? You know what that would have done? Her, for... I need her email address. I got to tell her how, where she can sleep with me. That would have meant a lot to me as a kid. And I did share this with my friend Dennis, who was the other guy that, you know, went around the bend with me. And, and he thought it was really scary because he had shared that experience. And I don't, I, I'm sure I shared it with other people, but I don't remember them being scared. But he, he was like, you captured how it felt that night. And, and, you know, if it had been 10 times worse. And, and we would talk about the things that scared us and, and helped us not be scared about them anymore. And, oh, and the, the, the one other thing is I used to be so afraid that I would look out the window and there'd be a face looking in at me. Maybe it's the same as the rearview mirror or whatever. But, you know, that was that was something that scared the pee out of me. From childhood to old agehood, I'm still afraid of that. The thought of that is really scary. And so all of those things happen in this story. And you know what? Maybe it would have been better if it had been a four-page story and one of those things happened and then they got killed. And you could put the next one and the next one and the next one. But, you know, to me, it was like all the monsters at once. (laughs) And I was mortified while you were reading it because I was like, oh, this is such crap. But I don't feel that way anymore. Now that it's done, it's like... I just told you the worst thing I ever did. And you still said you wanted to go to Vegas and hang out, you know? I'm in a good mood now. It's weird. As, hey, as long as we don't have to go through a tunnel where the, the green ghost haunts, then I'm fine. Is there a tunnel Are on the way to Vegas? Are there tunnels on the way to Vegas? There can't be. I don't remember. It must there's have been one on going the way somewhere else. to California. If you're going Reno way, there's a tunnel going through the mountain. So I could be. Where, I don't know where we were going. I I, I shouldn't have said Vegas, but could that was Vegas. the only place that we would go all the time. And yeah, there's not. There might be a tunnel there. I don't remember. I've only driven that way once. I always go the other way. We always go Reno because that's. But you and I have driven to Vegas a couple of times, right? Uh, I guess, yeah. January. I've gone three times then. I think in January, we're going to go to Vegas. I think we are. And people can hang out with us if they want yeah. to. And they can tell me how much this story didn't scare them. <laughs> and like, you know what was scary? The way you used whom. <laughs> the way you said quite. <laughs> That's twice right. in two sentences. The, the word quite. There was something terrible where, like, he was quite out of it. Yeah. And 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 you said another a quite, like, two paragraphs before that was also just as goofy. He was quite out of it. He shan't do that again. You know, in a way, I feel like we're making fun of a handicapped person. <laughs> we're going to burn in hell for the things yes, we're saying we about are. little Richelieu outfield. That little Richie. He didn't deserve that kind of treatment. He did as good as he could. 
with his meeker talent. Yeah. His... But he was a brave little toaster, <laughs> that kid. I mean, seriously, we talk about our fears, the things that we're afraid of. And, and, and I'm always afraid that somebody's going to say, you're not a talented writer. This story sucked. You suck. Get out of here. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And sharing a story like this, it, you know, everything, every story you send out is going to make the next one a little easier, right? I would think so. And so I didn't want to do this because I knew it would make me look talent free. And <laughs> But now it's done and it's out there and people can mock me if they want to yeah. in, the, in the comments. Oh, Maybe gosh, someday I should look. dig out my old Spider Woman story. I've, I've got it downstairs. I'm pretty sure I could find it in the space of a few minutes. It was printed on a dot matrix printer, and it's in a binder. <laughs> and I had to tear those little things off the side. Yes, but mine too. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's how this version came to be, is I had my stories from that period in a notebook, and I just had to retype it. And so there are very few typos. That I think I saw like two in the whole thing, despite the commas, which I love. So grammatically, it was all right-ish. But yeah, it's just everything else wasn't. But okay, your story, you share the Spider-Woman story. Would you be afraid? Would you at all be? It's like, oh gosh, what if they say that I'm not? What would be worse? Because basically I rewrote the Spider-Woman story. We used it as a incentive episode. It was something out there. Yes. And what would be worse is if people heard that and goes, eh, that one was about as good as the one that you just did last time. <laughs> They said, oh, so they're saying you've learned nothing. Yeah, if they're saying that there wasn't much improvement between then and now, that would be the worst. They're like, wait, you wrote this 20 years ago? And it's just about even with the one that you wrote last year? Ooh, bye. That would be the worst. If they're, if you listen to it and you're like, ah, yeah, 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 that was a long time ago and you really sucked back then. That, it's okay. You've gotten better. That's fine. <laughs> See, the good thing is you haven't rewritten this, so we don't have anything to compare it to. This is the rewritten version, I'm sure. All of those many, many, many words had to have come from somewhere. <laughs> Not that that really matters. No, I, I, I guess it doesn't. Well, this has been hard to get 13 in a row, but hopefully somebody out there like Gallagher Larby or somebody who has been kind to us feels like, well... You know, it was all for him. It was worth it. The extra effort. Oh, yeah, I hope so. And uh, we'll keep doing our best to please those folks. So that was our uh, Wunderbar episode with uh, Rish's ancient story dug up from the grave where it has lied grave. undead for all these years and allowed now to roam about moaning and groaning. Thanks for listening, folks. Hope you had a, uh, a good laugh, at least. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you again next time. Play with me. Play with me. <laughs> you know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother? And so this has either been two episodes or one massive episode. Which do you prefer? I think you, well, let's make it two episodes. How many do you think we've got now? This probably is eight or nine. Okay. What do you think? I don't know. Probably have to do some Skypers.